All right, so it took me about, I guess about an hour, and I went back and I followed the, uh, found out first of all that it's a negative power switching, which means the, uh, the speeds of the fan are regulated by negative power, and the fan has a, I believe a constant positive to the, uh, to the motor. Now I replaced the fuse on the motor because I was trying to check them and with these square fuses, I'll show you, they're not really easy to check. Uh, I guess you kind of really got to look at it if you get in there to see, but the where they are under the dash, it's hard to see these. And these are the Trinesium ones. And you know, I really hate to bash China because it's not the Chinese people. So don't take this wrong if you're Chinese, but it's the products and the quality of products and materials that they're given to work with that end up with something like this. And of course, greedy people that want to make a buck. So when you're going to replace these fuses, you want to replace them with something very good because this, I don't know if you can see very well. Good view of this here. This, this is what came out of my fuse box. It's all melted. This was a 40 amp. So I replaced it with a 50 amp and the blower came on. Now with that said, I don't know that my blower problem is fixed. So I'm not putting all this stuff back. I'm just gonna put two bolts or screws back in the blower and let it run tonight and uh, hope for the best. And I got my old one, which actually I'm gonna plug in and make sure it works before I call eBay and start giving the guy crap, you know? Uh, we could do that now, actually, while you guys are watching, because uh, I really don't want the second video to really be sucky. And I'll show you real quick where the uh, the fuse is. It's uh, it's F40 on the in the fuse box, but I'll show you because it'll be easier to see. Okay, so this is the the blower I got from uh, Ford, and it seems to be okay. I was a little weary that you know the blo mo the motor would go like that so it, it kind of bugs me because now i'm thinking maybe the motor i threw out was still good live and learn right all right so let's plug this motor in see now this is the one from ebay we'll turn that on low <laughs> makes a little bit of noise though but it, it's good for a backup motor it's a uh, Friday, you know, Friday at nine o'clock at night, blower goes, we got a blower. Okay, so we're gonna check the resistor, or I'm gonna show you how to check the resistor and what results you should expect from a, a good resistor on a working system, because my system's working now. So I figured I'd go through this and add it to the video because it's kind of a fuse, kind of a, you know, <laughs> stu stupid short video. So I'll include this and uh, hopefully it'll help you when you do a diagnostics. Um, we're gonna be using uh, the power probe, okay? And what it's gonna do is gonna tell me uh, the amount of resistance that's on the negative line. Cause remember this, it's negative powered, positive, not positive ground, but always continuous positive and a um, control negative, if that makes any sense. Not really, I'm not a mechanic, so it's kind of hard to get the proper terminology. At zero. It shows a um, continual uh, positive on both terminals. So, uh, geez, to get you to, so you can see. So this one here is actually the, the the purple here is the negative control, but it shows positive 13 volts. And this here is the positive right here, the yellow one, yellow with the green stripe. This is positive, okay? But when you turn the unit on, so we're gonna put it on one, which is slow, put it on the negative ground, and you're gonna read 4.7 to 4.8. Okay, whoops, 
No, 4.8. Gonna put on number two. And now we read in 8.0. So it's not resistance, it's actual voltage. Okay, so it's 8.1 volts. 8.2, 8.1. Okay. I wanna make sure I don't get my fingers chewed up by this fan. Ah! Okay. And number three is 4.5. Then we're gonna go up to number four. And that shows a complete ground. So it shows zero volts. Okay. Back down to number three. 4.4. I'm guessing that's the resistance or something because 7.9, because the resistance seems to get higher as the lower we go, which would make normal, which would make sense. And then, come on, 9.5 now on low. Anyways, uh, that's, that's it in a nutshell. So I know my resistor's working. So it all turned out to being a fuse. Now, with that said and done, what blew the fuse? Why did the fuse blow? Is it just because it was a crappy fuse? That very well might be. The first motor could have blown. We replaced it with the new one. But we also, I replaced the fuse because I broke the fuse trying to check it to pull it out. Couldn't get it out. So I'm thinking that uh, that Chinesium fuse could handle the amperage supposed to be 40 amps but for some reason it kind of went maybe a good idea with these fuses to maybe get some sort of relay or auto reset fuse or something to put in there all right i gotta put this back and go inside and get warm thanks for watching guys i hope this helped bye okay just for um for demonstration purposes or for fyi i guess more than anything else uh go through the owner's manual because this is your best place for information about your van. Um, to find your relay and your fuses, go in your owner's manual on page uh, 201. I think, uh, I think we're getting it there. Okay, that's a picture of your fuse box. And it's R9. So the fuse box sits like this. When you're going to be looking at it, it's going to sit like that. Okay, and you want to R9 is your relay, and R40, or sorry, F40 is the fuse for your um, for your heater blower motor. Um, getting to F40 shouldn't be too much of a problem. You might want to use uh, needle nose pliers and wiggle wiggle it out carefully because they do break easily. All right, uh, I had a lot of trouble with mine getting it out. I think I bent one of the terminals in the process. It was it was really crazy. But um, to check the relay, now you know where it is, um, just put your finger on it. I'll show you where it is here. Underneath this here, let me put the screen here so I can see. This here is your uh, R9. Now you see where I have a red fuse in there? Okay, that's um, F40. Now it should be a green one. Okay, I put a red one in here because it's a 50 amp and the 40 amp just messed up. So I'm going to go and get a proper uh, non chinesium or at least a better one to replace that with because I don't want to uh, overstress the system. You know, feels a little warm, but I don't know if that's the fuse or the current or what. So we're going to replace that with a, F, with a 40 amp instead of a 50 amp. And that's your relay. All right, guys. Oh, okay, so everything is done. Uh, just FYI, I did go to uh, Napa and I bought the proper 40 amp fuse for it. I installed it, everything works fine. Uh, definitely don't upgrade your fuses to, from, you know, a 10 amp to a 20 amp or 50 amp. It's really not a good, in an emergency situation, and you're there, you're watching the vehicle and in case something happens, you, you, you can probably get away with it. 
but I wouldn't go more than five amps higher. In this case, of course, there is no 45 amp fuse in the kit, so I had to put, use a 50 amp. You know, so just be, you know, be warned that definitely don't go up in higher amps. There's a reason why it's only a 40 amp fuse. All right, guys, thanks for watching. This is the channel for Ford Transit stuff. When something happens with my van and I do a high mileage, uh, I have a high mileage van or job, I post it here so that you guys can have an idea of what you're getting into or what may be coming up with your Ford Transit. Don't forget to like and leave a comment. If you have a Ford Transit, you've had issues, let me know. I'd love to hear about them. My name's John. Thanks for watching. Bye now.